there everyone and welcome to another edition of Lydia's Crafty Corner with me Lydia in my little crafty corner. So today we're going to be repurposing some packaging to make a really quick and easy shaker card. So to start with I'm going to be using the double rainbow stencil from Alta New. Now I'm just going to pop in a couple of these pieces because I don't want that little rainbow that's on the corner piece so I want the more full one. So I'm just going to kind of mask that out using the little masked pieces that we do have in the little stencil itself. So you do get all of these little pieces. So all I'm doing is I'm popping them in like a little jigsaw. So once all of those pieces are in the one that we have in the corner, I can then use some masking tape to keep those all together and then mask that out completely. We do want the big rainbow at the bottom. So I'm just going to mask these ones. If you did want to do it one at a time, you could definitely do that as well. So once I have that, I'm then going to take a piece of cardstock. So this is four and a quarter and by, by five and a half. And I'm just going to pop this into place. As you can see, that masking tape is keeping all of those little pieces together. So I don't need to worry about that at all. And I'm just going to add some masking tape to the back just to keep that in place. I also want to keep in this little half circle that we have at the bottom. So I'm just going to push that up and then add a little bit of tape to keep that in place too. I'm then going to go ahead and do some ink blending. I do love ink blending and rainbows, so this is my favorite thing. So to start, I'm going to be using the pink pearl. This is a soft, dusky, like corally pink color, which is very, very pretty. I am using the small blending tool for that one. I then moved on to chamomile. This is kind of a yellowy orange color, and I thought that, that would work for both the yellow and the orange. So I've just done that one. And then I'm going to move on to the beautiful Minty Mint. I'm using a mini blending tool for this one because I didn't have a green one to hand. And then I'm going to go on to the Volcano Lake for that beautiful color there. You can see that I am going over the other colors to kind of blend these in together. And then Wisteria to finish off. So once I've done one layer of color, I'm then going to go over them again, exactly with the same ink colors. And this is really going to blend them together and give me a really beautiful, vibrant color. So I find it easier to kind of layer up the inks to get a really nice effect rather than going down really heavy handed at first. That first layer will give a really good base for the second layer to go on. So once I've done that, I can then remove the stencil and remove this little masking tape that we have on the back and you can see just how pretty that little rainbow is there. I did want to add a little bit of extra dimension and interest to this one. So I'm taking the flower bed 3D embossing folder. I'm just going to pop that panel straight inside and then I'm going to emboss that through my die cutting machine. So as you can see, when I lift this up, you can see that all of those beautiful flowers have been transferred and we do also have that really cool rainbow there. I also wanted to add a little bit more depth and dimension to kind of the flowers that are on the rainbow section. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same stencils that we used before. So this is a double rainbow and I'm popping that back into place where it was. I'm then going to take a darker shade of each of the colors that I used and go over that so it just kind of brushes and whispers across the tops of the 3D embossing folder to give us some added depth there. So for the pink layer, I'm going to be using the Coral Bliss ink. So once I'm done with that one, I'm then going to move on to the Snapdragon for that yellowy orange kind of color that we have on the rainbow there. Next up, I'm going to be using the Sweet Leaf to add that darker color to the green. I'm then going to move on to Lagoon to add the darker points on to that layer there. And then once that one's done, I'm going to move on to Hydrangea for the purple part. Once that's done, I can then remove the whole of that stencil and then give that a good old clean. But you can see that we have that added depth there. I then wanted to add a little bit more highlight. So I'm just going to take some white pigment ink and I'm just going to kind of rub and swirl that over the top. I am being very, very light. I just kind of want this to kiss the tops of that embossing that we have there just to add a really great kind of look to there. The more you put down, the lighter everything will become as well. 
I'm then going to take a piece of packaging. So this is just like some paper packaging that I had. And I'm just going to trim this a little bit larger than the panel that we have. So this is going to act as our shaker element, really cheap and also a little bit of recycling and repurposing. So that's good too. I'm just going to place that face down onto that little piece of plastic that we have. And we're just gonna wrap this around that panel. I'm adding some super sticky tape to keep this in place. You do wanna make sure that everything's quite tight when you do this. You don't want a baggy kind of shaker at the front. So make sure everything's nice and taut before you kind of fold that round and then keep that in place with some super sticky tape. Before you even close up the top one, you are gonna to wanna to add your shaker elements. I'm just gonna use some of these satin white um, sequins from Altenew, and I'm just gonna shake a few of those in. I may have added a little bit too many, but I think it's very, very cute anyway. Once that's done, we can go ahead and just close off that top portion, and that means that nothing is gonna be able to escape. Once that's done, we can then add some more super sticky tape to the back. And this is how we're going to kind of adhere this onto our card front. Once that's had all that little double sided tape on the back, I'm then going to take a card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm just going to adhere that to the front. I had these sentiments all ready to go. These are from the sentiment strips three and the two sentiments that I've taken out from there, one that says, look, when it rains, look for rainbows. And the other one says, when it's dark, look for stars. And I thought that was really cute to go on to this card. So that is the ones that I have chosen. I'm just gonna add a little bit of foam tape to each of these little sentiment strips that we have here, and then I can pop them into place. I am using the guidelines on my little cutting mat behind me to make sure that everything's nice and straight. And here is the card complete. I really do hope that you like the card and that you've enjoyed the video as well. If you do create a card that was inspired by this, it'd be great if you do share, because we'd love to see. Thank you so much for watching everyone, and we'll see you again really, really soon. Bye-bye. Hello there crafty friend, Lydia here. Just popping in to say that you can get your daily dose of crafting tips, techniques, and tutorials just like this by subscribing to the Altenew YouTube channel. All you need to do is click on that little bell up there and you will never miss a video. Thanks for watching, bye bye.